Hey, everybody. So this is a research paper that caught my attention for quite a few reasons. Uh, the research paper is titled Reinforcement Learning for Reasoning in Large Language Models with One Training Example. And it's put out by a plethora of universities, as well as Microsoft, University of Washington, USC, U uh, University uh, UC Santa Cruz, as well as uh, Georgia Institute of Technology. And the bottom line within this is that the paper outlines exactly what the title says, right? That you can do one shot reinforcement learning on models. And then they use, in this instance, the Quinn 2.5 Math 1.5B. And then so that's the model that I'll replicate everything with uh, within uh, all of what they've put out. They also put out uh, GitHub with like a lot of the code and like uh, references and, and like uh, everything that they, they uh, built out. And then you can access it via the GitHub repository. Like there's a ton, like a ton of code here um, that they uh, have in here. I tried to like uh, run it from the, the repository directly. Uh, a few times I ran into issues. So I, I, I built out just kind of my own trainer and I'll, I'll outline that specifically. But within the research paper overall, uh, what they showcase is, is like a very uh, elegant overall and simple to do, right? Essentially, they uh, take a model and then they train it on randomized math questions. And then they like um, just do like um, a reinforcement learning of one math question. And then it's able to increase the score uh, on math 500, like the overall math test set. So like not just like on the one problem, but it just does reinforcement learning on the one math problem. Uh, and then it jumps its performance from from 36% to 73.6% on this benchmark. I think it doubles the performance of the model on this entire test by fine tuning it or essentially fine tuning it via reinforcement learning on one example, like one prompt, one question, right? And so to me, this in and of itself brings up a lot of things for discussion. So let's talk about what this brings up for discussion within this overall, right? Because it's there's a lot of things to unpack within this. The first thing to unpack within that is very simplistically, uh, what they're showcasing within this is exactly what I just outlined and said, right? Which is that they're taking one example and then they're training, they're testing it on Math 500, which is 500 examples. Uh, and the model is doubling its performance on these 500 examples from the one example. And then so that in and of itself takes out a uh, kind of a upfront argument that some people like to make within these things, right? Which is that the, the model can't uh, extrapolate from the training data uh, in any way. Obviously, they can. Right? This is taking one example and uh, getting doubling the performance on 500. There's no other way that you can like uh, deduce and break down what is going on within that particular equation, except for the model is extrapolating on some level from the one example to 500, right? Very simplistically, that is very clearly what is going on within this uh, particular equation. So that's kind of step one that we look at and we evaluate within this, right? And then so uh, step two within this and kind of the, the second significant thing within this that, that, that's um, comes to mind when we're looking at the uh, performance and what this actually like uh, means and and um, unpacking right is that like the next thing that people try to say is is that the models are simple next token predictors um, and then within that that they'll never there's never going to be anything um, more, more than that overall, right? Um, and then to me, like it's interesting overall, like these reinforcement learning studies that this is working and the fact that this is working on, again, one, <laughs> uh, one shot, or one shot, one prompt, right? Uh, is very significant again in regards towards, uh, countering those particular arguments within that, like, so let's, I'll spend a lot of time focusing directly on that, right? Because I do, I have a thoughts on that. And then so my thoughts on that are around dolphins. Uh, and then so when I think of that, right? So the argument is, is essentially that these models don't have the um, framework, like the internal 
framework or the internal structure to be uh, anything more than like uh, simplistic entities, right? Like, like, like uh, we'll, we'll leave it like that. That would be the definition. And then so within dolphins, let's look very specifically at the nervous system, right? Like the so skeletal system, kind of complex, muscular system, kind of complex, nervous system. Dolphins have a nervous system that is responsible for fast coordinating activities within the body and for responding to the environmental changes outside of the body. Coordination is brought about by electrical impulses that travel along nerves called neurons. They're pushed together to form nerves. The nervous system is divided into the central nervous system, which contains the brain and the spinal cords. The peripheral nervous system has the nerves that connect the central nervous system with the sensory organs, such as the eyes and the ears, and also with the responding structure or the effectors, such as muscles and glands. And then so you look at this structure here, right? That's all, all that is going on within these model within this model, right, within this dolphin, uh, within the, the dolphin nervous system structure, it's uh, like your brain and uh, or the brain and then nerve connections and then the spinal cord. And, and that's that's the whole entire structure, right? Uh, very simplistically, like, like uh, me, engineer, me, simple brain, right? This structure is very simplistically like, like a, a, and uh, kind of almost like a, uh, AI, like in, in regards towards like the, the, like, uh, um, parameters, how they're set up, like, et cetera, right? Like, like uh, what we, what AI is meant to mimic is a simplified version of the, essentially like the neurons within the human brain. Uh, and then this is a very simplified version of neurons and the nervous system within the human brain. Like this is a very simplistic nervous system, right? Uh, and then kind of like what gets into scientific debate within this particular nervous system is because it is so simplistic. One thing that you will notice if you're paying attention to the simplicity of this nervous system is that there's nothing within this nervous system that regulates creates uh, or dictates emotion. It's nerves, spinal cord, the brain, and then like this subcervical ganglion, which attaches the brain to the to like the the uh, spinal cord, right? Uh, and then it's all nerves. <laughs> the rest of it is one hundred percent nerves. Um, and then so within that, like there's no structure within here to to. Uh, generate like process emotion within dolphins would you say that dolphins are particularly emotional or unemotional i mean like like is, is, is this guy showing emotion or completely incapable of emotion because according to the nervous system according to the simplistic structure of the the model that it does it's this this model is incapable of uh emotion on any level uh, but i like here, <laughs> like I, I think it is right, um, and then so when we come, and and when I come back here, like not to say, like not to equate emotion directly uh, onto AI, like that's not the argument that I want to make within that, right? The argument that I want to make within that is that, like, so the structure of AI is a next token generators, um, and then just like a, it's a, a simple nervous system, right? But just because the structure is a simple nervous system doesn't mean that there are. Uh, Capabilities beyond that overall, right? Like, I, like, I, uh, I mean, I, I, stretching that out, like, uh, my, like, my particular thoughts on AI overall at the moment are that it's like a, a key zombie, like a philosophical zombie is like the best, um, framework that I think that AI currently as it exists operates under, uh, in that, like, it, it's lacking too much of the, the, um, internals. <laughs> like, it's lacking more than the dolphin is lacking, uh, in, in this instance. Like, it's lacking the, the, internal go mechanism and i'm assuming that the internal go is in the brain i don't know where it is right but um that's what's uh, like to me lacking overall within these models in the status quo but so going back to uh a research paper here and, and uh, grounded research uh, and exactly what we're looking at here within this the bottom line is uh that these models are again learning via reinforcement learning um and then via one shot reinforcement learning is like the the um bottom line within that, right? And then so um, the further discussion and the kind of the the last like philosophical point of discussion on this before we actually like dive into like the code and look at like the example of this uh, implementation within this is the fact that um, within this that like the 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 kind of third argument that people uh make within this is that like the models like uh because they are next token predictors that there isn't uh 
reasoning going on within the models, right? Uh, and then I would say that, like, um, to me, what you see very specifically and, and how this is working overall is that, like, uh, there has to be some sort of reasoning and environmental interaction that, that occurs and, and goes on in these instances, or like these particular methods like reinforcement learning here that we're looking at here wouldn't be effective overall, right? Uh, I look at it, I mean, simplistically, like uh, going back to, that, I've used the example before, like the, the passive kitten versus the active kitten experiment that occurred in the 1960s, where they like ran kittens on the carousel, right? Uh, and then, so to me, it's, if you take a neuron and then you, train a neuron in different ways um, and different environments or and different interactions with its environment it will and different sensors essentially <laughs> related to the environment it will uh, pick up those different sensors and be different things like I guess I mean to me I guess the bottom line that I look at it is like I look at it like maybe neurons are, are like uh, stem cells uh, kind of in that way right and then like uh, stem cells can be like anything and then they they grow and they're built into different things right um and then so um neurons to me uh, kind of operate and seem to operate within that same way like if you just train it on data <laughs> and then it's just it's a whole entire life and existence as data if you train it just to be the passive kitten it will always be the passive kitten and that will be its life if you train it via reinforcement learning and then you train it like via different environments then it learns more about different environments and how those structures operate and how those work overall right and this is just more and more research to me kind of backing up these things. But so let's go into this method and, and dive deep into the actual specific method itself, right? Because uh, it's really cool overall. Um, and then so this is one shot LLM reinforcement learning up front. In order to get this to even run in this collab notebook, I had to take some extreme liberties. And then you can see like I'm I'm like almost maxing it, right? Like 11.9 like, uh, out of 12.7 and then 14.7 out of 15 uh, on the RAM. And then like I'm, I, I'm like this is like to the extremes, right? Um, so uh, pointing out the bottom line within this is that you would want to run this on much higher, uh, better GPU. Like this isn't for the GPU ports. Is like this particular method is the bottom line within it. Uh, if you have a, a very powerful, very, very powerful GPU, then this method is for you and it's easy to do overall. And it would be easier and a lot faster than what we're looking at here. But um, within this, we have a lot of uh, packages that we're importing here, and then we have um, device set up, a lot of device set up in order to get this to load. The model itself is very small, right? So this is the Quen 2.5 uh, math, which is a 1.5 <laughs> like I, these names are weird, right? Um, but so it's a 1.5 billion parameter model overall, as far as the 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 model. So kind of small and overall small. It would take up. Uh, I would be able to run this on. Um, free Google Colab without any sort of uh, GPU whatsoever if I was just loading the model. Uh, and then we have all of the training. And then this training is what's taking up the massive amounts of like all of the RAM, right? Uh, as to like what this process is, we're essentially loading in our data set. I'm taking extreme liberties with regards to the batch size. Batch size is four to reduce like memory. Like everything is in this to reduce memory, right? Um, and then within this, we're essentially, uh, I'm giving it a single layer prompt exactly like what the model is, right? So the pressure P exerted by wind on a sail varies jointly as the area A of the sail and the cube of the wind's velocity V. When the velocity is eight miles per hour, the pressure on a sail of two square feet is four pounds. Find the wind velocity when the pressure on four square feet of the sail is 32 pounds. Let's think step by step and output the final answer within this output, within this particular uh, framework that we use, right? Um, and I give it the ground truth of 12.8 um, so that it knows what the answer would be in that instance. And then so that's a, literally all we're training on. It's like this is all that the model is getting as far as uh, training goes. And, and and that's, I mean, we're just looping this into this whole entire training set, right? And then we're just doing it via like a um, reinforcement learning process. So the model is, it's like, uh, via a policy gradient loss via like uh so it's like a ppo um training as far as like how we're actually doing the reinforcement learning of the model overall I ran it through, so you have lots of notes here to go through if you're very curious um, as to what exactly is going on. And then you can see it's been running here for 22 minutes and um, a, a, like a lot of the training here, right? And then it's um, going through and, and 
generating and, and it will run and, and uh, this will get you what you want here. But again, like I had to shrink what they're doing. And then even with shrinking what they're doing in this process, it's still like a um, very prime intensive and, 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 and what's going on here. So this is going to take a while to run, but I'll leave it here for you. My suggestion would be that if you want to experiment with this and actually replicate what they're doing, don't run it in collab. Like, and, 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 um, it's not, again, not for the GPU pores, just how it is. I, uh, hopefully these methods will get me more refined overall. Um, but so I'll leave a link to both the research paper here, reinforcement learning for reasoning in large language models with one training example, uh, as well as the one shot LLM reinforcement learning collab notebook. And if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.